One of the things that's always bothered me about the Starlink is it has a 120 volt router. And for RV life, we're mostly 12 volts when we're off grid. 120 volts when you're plugged in, or you can run an inverter, but I don't want any of that mess. I want 12 volts only. Let's get this thing figured out. Any good scientific experiment needs to start with a baseline. Today's baseline is gonna be using the 120 volt router and doing a speed test. And this is what it looks like on 120 volts. Not bad. And then here is the mess that we put together to make it all work. We're gonna show you how this is all done. Sometimes you gotta be messy in order to get clean. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. First, you gotta put it all together. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna show you how it's done. On the way over to the workbench, let's get the Starlink dish stowed. Sometimes you just have to start with a pile of stuff and then it will start to make sense. Let's get some of this pile sorted out for you. What we're going to do is make our Starlink dish work off of 12 volts and the Starlink dish works off of 48 volts. So that's what this little thing right here is. This is a 12 volt to 48 volt converter. And then this is the 48 volt power over ethernet injector. And I need to get some standard looking ends on these things here. So I have some standard looking things to do with them. And I've got all the tools to do that here. So we have power pole connections for our 12 volt side and a set of power pole crimpers. And then we have wire strippers in order to strip the wires. And then we have this thing here, which is actually really neat. These are what's called ferrules. And these make it so that you can take these bare wires and insert them more often without having everything fray on you. These are actually pretty nice and already tinned for you, but not all of them are all the time. So let's get to work. I'm actually gonna start out with the power poles. And these tools here, these are from Kaiweets, and then this is from IWIS. And I will have links to all this stuff in the description down below. But power poles are a pretty standard thing in my world. So I need a booty, and I need a red, and I need a black. And then I need, I call these spoons, I don't know what else you would call them but I need two of those. And then I always have something else that I've already made that has power poles on it to use as a reference. So that's what this is. This is a fuse kit that a friend of mine makes and sells. So you can have an inline fuse because that's what fuses are. Power poles are great because they can only connect together. Once you get all the, the connector made up, they can only mate together one way. So like that works out just fine, but you can't put it together negative to positive unless you take these apart and go through a lot of hysterics to make that happen. And I am not going to be doing that. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is find the 12 on my strippers and strip off the right amount of insulation to get these guys going. There's one down. There's two down. And then they just slide right on like so. And then into the crimper it goes. And then the connectors are fairly easy. You can hear it snap when it snaps into place, it's good. And if not, you can always use a little screwdriver to shove it all the way in. All right, both of them snapped into place. And then we test it out and the connection works just fine. That one's done. Now, here comes the fun part. But I don't think that this black and yellow is actually 12 like the red and black is. That says 16, what does it say? 16, what color is 16? 16 is black. So let's get out a couple of black. They give you a ton of these ferrules with this thing. And that can make a big mess if you weren't very careful. But this is pretty cool. How it crimps in a circle like that. I guess it's technically in a square, but you know what I mean. And then that just comes right off. And oh, these are pre-tinned also. So I'm gonna cut off the little pre-tin part because that's a pain. And other than being wasteful, you can't strip off too much because whatever comes out the end of the connector like that, you can just trim off after you crimp it down. So let's crimp this down and see how it looks. So that only needs to go into the metal part. And now I have a nice crimped down connector. 
and trim off the excess. And that looks very nice and professionally dressed. Beautiful. Now I've got a couple of very nice ends. And these ends work great for plugging into something like this or for your everyday solar charge controller work. And yellow is positive. And positive goes into the number one hole. And negative goes into the number two hole. As the screw turns that way, it actually pulls the wire in more. And if it's turning the other way, it's pushing the wire out. So belts and suspenders type thing. Look how nice those connections look. Instead of just frayed wires going in there. So now I have 12 volts coming in from my 12 volt power supply into my 48 volt DC boost converter into my power over ethernet injector. Ta-da! And then this is able to hold itself shut, which is nice. And then this is the KDC-01. Ferrule kit, which comes with all of these ferrules and the wire stripper that I wouldn't use much and the ferrule crimper. And then the power pole crimper. Now that we have all of that stuff made up, we have the mini HDMI cable converter to RJ45. We have the RJ45 connector run into the power over ethernet injector. And then we have the power supply to get 12 volts DC from our battery to 48 volts DC that the Starlink wants. So you take your Starlink cable and plug it in. And then that fits in very nicely, just like so. And now I need 12 volts. Where am I gonna get 12 volts from? Well, in an RV, you have tons of 12 volt sources, but also I have a 12 volt battery pack that I built that will handle this just fine. So we need to get this thing powered up with our 12 volt battery pack. And this will accept solar input power and it will provide me with 12 volts DC right here on the side of the solar charge controller. And this is one of the reasons why I put the Anderson power poles on the converter here. I say this a lot, but if it is ugly and it works, then it is not ugly. This is the HomeFi router. There will be some more information coming up on this in a future video. The yellow cable goes into the power over ethernet adapter. The power supply gets plugged into the battery box. The black cable goes to the media converter to convert from ethernet cable to Starlink cable, and I don't need to cut anything. And we are pulling power out of the system. And here's what that power looks like. We are at somewhere around three to four amps. I've seen four amps as a max draw and you can see it over here on the left hand side. So we've got 12 volts coming out of the battery. We've pulled three-ish amps on average and I've been doing this for a couple of hours now. We're at seven hours of battery life, almost eight hours of battery life consumed. This is a 12 amp hour battery, so rough math is four amp hours divided by 12 equals three hours worth of use on this battery. If you were to use a 100 amp hour battery, or if you were to use a battery plugged into a solar panel, you could go all day. 100 amp hour battery, rough math gets you about 20 hours worth of internet access, and a 100 amp hour battery with a solar panel and a charge controller gets you sunlight worth of <laughs> internet access. So, so far it works out pretty good. You are going to need to configure your router in order to forward the internet connection from your Starlink dish through to your home network. The Starlink dish itself is where all the brains are and it's just an ethernet device. It just shows up with an IP address and provides DHCP to your network. I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you guys at home to figure out. I will have a video on my router that I'm showing here coming up. I'm not done evaluating that. When I do that, I will show you how it works with all of the different providers that it works with because it's a multi-provider router, which is why it's got all those antennas and all those crazy ports on it. Since we have that all done, of course, the next thing we need to do is prove with our scientific method that this thing all works. Let's do some speed tests. We're gonna do a speed test here with the Starlink app itself, and it's looking pretty good. This is actually in New Mexico now, and for some reason I'm getting high speeds in New Mexico. This is just the mobility plan with its deprioritized service, and then we want to go ahead and test it out on the computer at speedtest.net and see what it looks like over there on speedtest.net. I'm pretty happy with this setup. Usually I get around 130 megabits per second. This is over 200 most of the time, and it is pretty good. Of course, it really depends on your physical location and the amount of congestion in your area and the plan that you pick. You will need to put your Starlink 
like router itself into bypass mode. Hook everything up to the old fashioned setup the way you would, the Starlink dish plugged into the Starlink mesh router, turn it on and wait for it all to come up. To be fair, it isn't all as difficult as it's going to look in the upcoming scene. However, I did want to share with you that sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. I probably didn't wait for it all to come up. And you just got to work your way through it and it'll be okay. After the first time, it does get a lot easier. Let's get the Starlink dish back online by taking it out of stow mode and letting it find some satellites. The amount of patience you have to have when dealing with internet and computers is amazing. Okay, now that we have it reconnected back to the dish, it says the dish is offline, but that is fine. I'm gonna go into settings, I'm gonna go into router, I'm gonna go into bypass mode, and we still can't go into bypass mode unless we're on the internet. So this looks like it's gonna be a one-way switch or it's gonna be difficult to make the switch back to using the Starlink Wi-Fi. But that's okay. I don't know that I'll need the Starlink Wi-Fi again. All right, it says we are finally online and it's downloading an update. This is a fantastic time. Once again, more patience required. All right, the update is finished. Maybe now we can get this thing done. Settings, router, bypass mode. You must be logged in and associated with this Starlink router. I am logged in and associated with this router. I'm actually using it. Settings, bypass mode. I'm restarting the Starlink software, seeing if that helps. Settings, router, bypass mode. I am logged in. Advanced, hey, look at that, I'm logged in. Statistics, I'm sending data back and forth. Hold on, what's that say? The Starlink just powered on, yep. Settings, Starlink, router. There's no login button. Log in to edit, there we go. That was crazy. That brings up Firefox so I can log in. Unable to log in, yay. Okay, so even though it told me it was unable to log in, it finally did log in. Again, lots and lots and lots of patience. I'm going to slide to bypass. Are you sure you will need physical access to the Starlink Wi-Fi router to perform a manual factory reset? Okay, so note that. When you wanna switch back, you need to do a factory reset in order to make it switch back. And yes, I will have physical access. It wants a customer satisfaction survey? Fine. What is important to me? Uh, let's see. Wi-Fi 6 is pretty important. Ethernet ports are pretty important. And realistically for me, other 12 volt DC power for RVs. And I'm now disconnected as I should be. So now we get to recable everything and go from there. Okay, so I had to do this a couple of different times in the video. The first time was the worst, and probably because I was not online and already connected. If you are already connected and already online with your Starlink setup and doing your internet over the 120 volt Starlink router that it comes with, putting it in bypass mode is very simple. I guess I just happened to catch it right after I turned it on and also right after it needed an update. So those were two pain points that I had to put up with, but I showed you in the video, you just have to have a little bit of patience and it'll get you through there just fine. Hopefully, if the people at Starlink are watching this, they can make the process a little bit easier. So I'm not gonna lie, switching the Starlink mesh router from bypass mode back to normal mode is a humongous pain in the butt. You have to unplug and replug the router six times in a row under two to three seconds per time, and it's that water gasketed, vacuum sealed, extra tight, super deep, hard to grasp, power plug, which is really stupid. And in an RV situation like me, I don't have like a light switch outlet or anything. I can just flip the switch and count to three or something like that. Remember back in like, I don't know, the 90s when routers were first invented and you could just like push a button with a paper clip and reset it? Take some notes there, Starlink. The 90s are calling. They, they have the solution to the problem that you have created brand new. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna make sure I never have to use that bypass router again. And to that end, I got this 12 volt power supply. And I opened it up and I saw this little thank you note. And I like little touches like this. They don't have to do it. But I mean, what does a card like this cost? It's just a business card. We're talking, you know, pennies per unit, if even that. And it just, it makes you feel like you're special. I like that. We have the power supply plugged into the wall outlet and it's always a trust but verify scenario. So let's check the voltage output on this. Pretty good 12.0 something volts. I'm happy. So why did I pick this specific power supply? In our earlier video, we determined that the whole Starlink setup was putting out about five amps. And so I wanted 12 volts DC at something above five amps. And if you look, that says 8.5. I'm gonna be happy with that. And then we have another problem to solve. And that is all of the mess of all of these cables and wires and little teeny tiny components going everywhere. So let me show you what I'm gonna do in order to take care of that, I think. Let's see if I can get out of here for under $100.
right, I gotta take that box back to Harbor Freight. It was not the right size. So, I gotta get to Lowe's now. Let's go take a look and see what's at Lowe's. Looks good to me. This one also looks pretty good. Very deep. Might be able to put a nice battery in the bottom of that to make it all self-contained. Side by side. You guys have seen these kinds of boxes before at your local big box store and it looks bigger on camera than it does in reality. So there, there's some perspective for you. It's not very big, but what it is, is fairly deep. And there's a reason for me to have that be fairly deep. So I have a piece of wood that I'm going to mount all of the stuff on and stick in the box. I need to cut this down to size once I'm done. And then there's all the stuff. And my reason is these antennas, I wanna just leave everything in the box the way it is and run it. So this is hopefully my solution and we will see. That is a big mess of wires just asking for trouble. We're gonna fix it. We have everything all put together in the box. All of the little individual components are screwed down to the wooden board. Everything is neat in the box and there's a little hole through the side in order for the power cord to go out and the Starlink cable to come in. This is gonna work out pretty nice. If you run this with the lid on, it will retain some heat and you will have to worry about heat issues. Maybe drill some extra holes in the box, totally up to you. Uh, I would not run it with the lid on for very long. I have done it for about a day. It did get to be too hot to the touch, but at the end it still worked and I was pretty happy with it. Know your heat surroundings and do the right thing. Fairly nice and robust setup and will support you on both 120 volts AC with the power supply that I put in there and 12 volts DC off of your house batteries inside of your RV. Here's a quick rundown of the parts that you're going to need. You will need the media interface adapter from ethernet over to starlink cable you will need the 48 volt dc power over ethernet injector and then you'll need the power supply to create the 48 volt dc to put into the power over ethernet injector and then if you don't want to switch back and forth between your router setup and the Starlink router setup, you will need a 120 volt to 12 volt power supply for when you are plugged into shore power and don't want to run off of your batteries. And finally, you're going to need some kind of router. I am currently using the HomeFi router. There will be a video on this coming out so shortly. However, if you do not have that router, you can use any router that you do have that supports 12 volts. This one here is a good choice that a couple of friends of mine have recommended and have used in their setup and should work out well for you until we can get some more proving done on the HomeFi setup. Links for all of this stuff will be in the description down below. For more tech tips and how to's and wonderful stuff about living on the road and actually living on the road, be sure you are subscribed to this channel because we show you all kinds of stuff about how to do this as we go about our journey, living for a living. We'll see you in the next video, which is right over here.